Welcome to the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Technology at the University of Richmond. For the last year and a half, we've been doing a fair amount of exploration of low-cost 3D printers at our institution. We started with a MakerBot thingamatic that we started in Thanksgiving of 2011, and we've been printing a fair amount with it. We usually print with the automatic build platform, which is a conveyor belt allowing automation of prints. Recently, we moved on to the Solid Doodle second generation printer, shown here. And we've done some modifications as well. In both cases, we went to a minimalist extruder. And we've done some additional print accessories, such as bushings and spool holders and what have you. But just today, the Solid Doodle third generation printer arrived. And when I noticed that we were one of the first customers to receive it, I decided let's go ahead and do an unboxing. So here we go. So first of all, this box is pretty light. Let's go ahead and open it. Now for the Solid Doodle 2, we had purchased the deluxe option, which came with a case and a plexiglass front cover. And for the Solid Doodle 3, that's not an option. So opening it up. I'll need to adjust the camera so it's more easily visible. So I've moved the camera so the top of the box will be able to be seen better. It comes with some nice uh, foam core mounts. And it's obvious this is the brick mold power supply out the front. Just take off the pieces. There's some nice bubble wrap that's protecting the extruder and motors inside. Uh, it's even better packaged, I think, than the uh, Solid Doodle 2 was. Let's take it out of the package. And here's the printer. Take off this bubble wrap. There doesn't seem to be anything inside. Same for the second one, there's a little bit of grease residue. Uh, one thing that we notice is that the solid doodle printers use a significant uh, lube grease for the motors, much different than what MakerBot does. And then bubble wrap for the stage. Now it's a significant stage and that's one of the interesting things is the solid doodle 3 is sold to print with a volume of 8 inches by 8 inches by 8 inches or 8 inches cubed while the second generation did 6 by 6 by 6 so a significant increase in build volume open the, the bag that comes with it is in a green ziplock inside a couple pages of instructions, welcome to the Solid Doodle family, an invoice, a packing slip saying that there's the 3D printer, a USB cable, a power cable, and starter filament. There's also a nice pictographic set of instructions. And lastly, it comes with some instructions for PVC pipe. Now, one of the things is that we've noted is that our Solid Doodle 2 didn't seem to come with the PVC pipe that a number of other customers had on theirs. So I'll see how well that goes together. What else is in the green side bag is the rest of the power core that connects to the brick bolt, that small bit of filament that they talked about, the USB cable, and the PVC tubes as mentioned. Well, pretty interesting. So, let's look at the printer for a minute.
For those who've had solid doodle twos, it has the same general configuration. Build platform translates along the z-axis and the xy is done by the extruder carriage. It looks like a very similar setup as before. There are sandwiched acrylic plates for the extruder. Very similar hot end as before. Now there's a zip tie that is holding on the umbilical cord to the extruder motor. But otherwise, it's very similar to the Solid Doodle 2, at least from the inside. Now let's look around the back. Now our Solid Doodle 2 came just before they started putting any kind of case to protect the uh, control board. But from what I've heard, other customers have had something similar where it's large enough to cover the circuit board but not really large enough to protect all around. I'll show an inset of what our Solid Doodle 2 looks like where the uh, modified case that we made for it really protects the board. Nonetheless, it looks like a pretty good case. Minimalist though. It would be nice to have some protection for these connectors, however. Another thing to mention is that just like the Solid Doodle 2, the power is connected straight into the control board. So in effect, the only way to really power on or power off the entire printer is to disconnect the AC power supply or from the wall. So one of the first things we'll do is probably get some kind of power switch that connects to the grounded switch to be able to do that manually without turning off our UPS that we use to back our printer. So now let's look at the printer side by side with the Solid Doodle 2 just for size comparison. So there they are next to each other. The Solid Doodle 2 is significantly smaller. We were wondering how they would go ahead and do this, whether they'd keep a very similar case and try to squeeze in the much larger build platform and even taller build volume into that smaller case or uh, redo the case. The case looks very similar to the other one except much larger and again we didn't get any kind of plexiglass cover for the Solid Doodle 3. I ran out of time but I did briefly connect it through a Petier and heat the extruder and heated platform. I extracted the starter filament installed my own, and tried printing. The ABS did not stick well because the platform was a little dusty from shipping, so I decided to wait until I could clean it off. Further, we usually print on glass plates with polyimid tape, so a printing vid will be following this one on February 3rd.